All right, today we're going to do 8B part 1, and we're going to talk about acid naming and describing chemical reactions. So for this one, what we need to, sorry, let me get to my ink, there we go. Okay, so we're actually just doing acid naming because this is going to be part 1. Now, with acid naming, there is another set of rules, so unfortunately that gets a little confusing, but acids are really easy to identify. They all have hydrogen out in front of them, or they say the name acid. Okay, so that's your requirement of realizing that someone, something is an acid. All acids are going to be hydrogen paired with some anion, and you can have two options. You can either have a polyatomic anion, so for example, this compound, um, you have the hydrogen ion paired with nitrate, which is NO3 one minus. This compound, you have hydrogen ion paired with the bromide ion, okay? And notice I'm writing these as, and this is a monatomic anion. Remember, mono means one, one atom. Poly means many, so more than one. So for this one, all right, you have, again, you have, and it, notice we're writing out the ions. So this is a one plus and a one minus, so it's a one to one ratio, one plus, one minus, one to one ratio. Okay, now, Dun, dun, dun. Name is always based on the anion root, so it's based on what hydrogen is paired up with. There we go. Now, naming binary acids. Bi means two, okay? So, binary acids are hydrogen ion, H+, and a monatomic ion, which is one of the halogens. And if you remember, if you look at the periodic table for the halogens, all of the halogens have one minus charges, because they have seven valence electrons. And when we name it, we always put hydro out front as the prefix, we have the root of the element name, and we put ick at the end. All right, well, what does that look like? Well, um, here's some examples. So HF would be hydrofluoric acid. All right, HBr is going to be hydrobromic acid. Um, hydrochloric, going in the opposite direction here, would be HCl. And hydriotic, notice we drop the O here, if we don't make it hydroiotic, um, would be hydrogen ion and the iodide ion, and it's going to be HI. Okay, HI. And those, again, are binary acids. Ternary acids is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Ternary refers to the three, and this is typically going to be hydrogen and a polyatomic anion, um, which, again, is going to mean that you have at least three different atoms or elements present in this compound. So for the naming, this is when it gets a little interesting. The poly, You go based on the polyatomic ion name. If it has an eight ending, you change the acid name to ick. If it has an ite ending, you change the acid name to us, okay, or aus, or however that um, you're going to say that. And this will be one of those things that you want to write down kind of all the time in order to help help yourself remember it, honestly. So, dun dun dun, let's do some practice here. Okay, so here you have, and again, this is where you're going to have to start to become familiar with your polyatomic ions. So for, fine. all right, so if you look up here, you remember you've got to figure out what ion is paired with it. Phosphate is PO4, and it will go to phosphoric acid. Now, if you had, for the purposes of this class, if you had written phosphic I would have given you credit for it. Phosphoric is the best option. The only other one that happens is when we're dealing with sul with sulfur um, polyatomic ions, and we'll mention that as well. Okay, now HNO2. NO2 is the nitrite ion. So as a reminder, remember if it's ite, we go us. So it becomes nitrous acid. Okay, nitrous acid. Now if you look at H2SO3, um, this comes, sol SO3 is sulfite, all right, if it's an ite ending we make it us, so this is going to be sol fur us acid, which is kind of, remember, the sulfates and the sulfites are going to be the other ones, phosphoric, you know, and sulfurous that we, sulfur, sulfurous that we have to add that in. Now, I just want to remind you, the reason that this 2 is here for hydrogen, if we were going the opposite direction, sulfite is a 2 minus charge. Hydrogen is a 1 plus charge. So when you crisscross them, it's got to be H2SO3. Okay, now, now we're going to go the opposite direction. So for acetate, 
on these. The, the formula for acetate is going to be C, there's two options. I'm going to go with CH3 COO and it's a one minus charge. Since it's a one minus charge it means I only need one hydrogen to pair up with it. So the formula for acetic acid, and I don't need the charge in there anymore once I write the formula, is either HCH3 COO or the other form of acetic acid which is where we just combine it where you have C2H3 O2. Okay, now carbonic acid is going to come from the carbonate ion. We go from ic to eight. Carbonate ion is CO3 2 minus. We pair it up with hydrogen which is a one plus so it ends up becoming H2CO3 and that is our formula for carbonic acid. Again, these are ternary acids. Now, some other names that we do still need to be familiar with that we may or may not have heard remembered. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Um, we've dealt with this one, but NH3, remember, is ammonia, which is different than the ammonium ion, which is NH4 with a 1 plus. Okay, that's ammonium. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That's the rest of part one. Um,